So today we're having a non-perishable harvest. All around us are non-perishable items rather than perishable things. And in this world, when you go and do your shopping and in your food, there are perishable items and non-perishable items. And then, of course, there are sometimes things in between. Um, Somebody once went into McDonald's and they bought this burger and this uh, chips. And they decided rather than eating it, they were going to put it in a paper bag, in a plastic bag, and to see how long it would take to decompose, to uh, to rot, and to, to fade away. So this is a picture of it taken 20 years later. There are perishable things, there are unperishable things, and then sometimes there are things that are just in between. I wonder what you prefer. When you go to the supermarkets, they tend to put all the perishable things out front. The fresh fruit, the fresh vegetables, the smell of the fresh baked bed. But when it comes to feeding our souls, when it comes to what our spirits need to be sustained, Peter says that it's actually what is non-perishable is best for us. Too often we try to feed our hearts with perishable things, with spiritual junk food. We try to fill ourselves with temporary things that don't last and give us long-term satisfaction. We try to fill ourselves with money, with possessions, with career, with the approval of other people. But those things don't give us lasting satisfaction. But Peter says in these verses that we're looking at this morning that if you want to live a life of love, if you want to grow into having a mature spiritual life, then you need the non-perishable food for your soul. And he says, what what is this non-perishable food? Well, it's the word of God. It is the Bible. It is the non-perishable food that we need. Look at what he says in chapter 1, verse 23. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. The word of God is imperishable. And in the verses that follow, Peter encourages his readers to have an appetite for the word of God. Why? Why should we hunger after the Bible? Because it is the non-perishable spiritual food that is the best diet we can have. The Word of God is eternal. The Word of God is life-giving. The Word of God is pure. And the Word of God is good. It is the non-perishable food that our souls need. So I have my my little can here of non-perishable food. And I'll, I'll show it to you on the screen so you can see, but it's, it's God's word. And we're going to be looking just at the little back of it, the contents, and to see just what God's word contains. And we will see just that it's pure, it's life-giving, and it lasts. So I'm just going to uh, put that up there. But first of all, we're going to look at uh, the best before date. So you get a can, even the best ones still have a best before date. And we see that the word of the Lord endures forever. The word of, the God, the word of God never goes out of date. In chapter 1, verse 24, quoting from Isaiah 40, uh, Peter says, All people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. When Peter says forever here, he means forever. He means eternity. It's in life, the effects of time are seen. And it's not just that it doesn't perish, spoil or fade as life goes on, but he's talking about when Jesus returns, It is what will endure on into the new heavens and the new earth. Earlier in this chapter, in verse 19, when Peter is talking about the redemption we have received through the precious blood of Jesus, he compares to it and says it's so much greater than perishable things like silver and gold. Because he's thinking about things eternally. Because silver and gold are quite non-perishable items. You can go into museums and see pieces of gold or things that have been made out of gold from the time that Peter lived, or even older than that. Gold lasts thousands of years. 
But Peter is thinking of that day when Jesus returns and all these things of this world will be dissolved by fire. But it is the word of God that will endure. When we die, we can't take silver and gold with us, but we can take the word of God. So we should fill our hearts with it because it lasts forever. What God has spoken to us through his prophets and the apostles and what is recorded for us in the scripture, it is eternal. It will always be true. So store it up in your heart. The word of God is eternal, but it never gets old or becomes stale. It is as fresh and as relevant as it always has been. Again, we saw that in verse uh, 23, that it says that the word of God is imperishable, living and enduring. It's always 100% fresh. And in that verse in 23, Peter uh, talks about the image of a seed. A seed goes into the ground and then it dies. But out of that comes a plant that bears fruit. But that seed that you planted, well, it's gone. It's, it's dead. It can't produce any more life out of it. But the word of God is an imperishable seed. When it goes into the ground of our life, it keeps living. So it keeps on producing new life again and again and again and again. The word of God is living. You know, some people think and people t- tell me that, you know, the, the Bible is, is no longer relevant. It's outdated. It's old fashioned. It's got no, it doesn't speak in to our modern society. But that's just not true. And when you read it, you see just actually how relevant and applicable it is to our lives. Our world faces a climate crisis. Well, it turns out the Bible's actually got something to say about that and how we can care for our earth. We go through a global pandemic. Turns out the Bible's got lots to say about hope and comfort and about how we can look after and care for each other. When we face a mental health crisis, turns out the Bible's got lots to say about how we can have right thinking on what we can effectively do with our worries and our fears. If you want advice on your, how to have a good marriage, advice on how to raise children, advice on how to be a good friend, advice about career, advice about how to use your money wisely. The Bible is full of timeless good advice. I don't know if you've ever experienced, uh, had the experience where you're reading the Bible and a verse just jumps out to you and it's just what you needed to hear at that moment. It's like the ink is just still wet and God has just written it just for you, just for that moment. The word of God is everlasting and it is ever fresh and it is 100% pure. Sometimes the non-perishable food items, well, they're full of preservatives or additives or got lots of salt in them, but the Bible is 100% pure. It is all the spiritual nutrition you need to grow up in your salvation. Uh, Look again at at chapter 2, verses 1 to 2. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Peter says, get rid of the junk food of malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander, and hunger for the word of God, the way a newborn baby hungers for milk. Uh, Last week, Julie and I were at an online baby class, kind of two hours in the morning to give you all the theory you need to look after a newborn baby. So we're fully equipped. We know exactly how to deal with a newborn baby from our class. But one of the things they said in that is that a newborn baby, their stomach is the size of a cherry. It's tiny. That's why they're always so hungry. That's why whenever they wake up, they cry for milk because their stomach is just so small. They're always hungry, always wanting more milk. And Peter says that's what we're to be like. That if we're wanting to grow up in our salvation, if we're wanting to becoming mature in our faith, then we need to be constantly feeding on the word of God. 
every day throughout the day. The more we have, then we, the more our appetite grows and we can just keep on feeding and feeding on it. Because that newborn baby, after a week, its uh, stomach grows to the size of an apricot. After a month, it's the size of an egg. And then by an adult, it is the size of a man. And as the stomach's capacity increases, then the more it can eat and the more it can grow. And it's the same for us, that when we first come to faith by hearing the gospel preached, we, are, we have this maybe small capacity. But as we start to read the Bible, as we start to study it, as we start to listen more, our understanding grows and our capacity for more and more of scripture starts to come. And as we live it out and start living by a life of faith, we will grow in our knowledge, grow in our living and grow up into our salvation and becoming mature people. But that appetite never fades. We still need to be constantly craving after the word of God. But that's not a chore, that's a joy, because the word of God is good. It is 100% good. In uh, verse 3, Peter quotes from Psalm 34, verse 8, which says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. The word of God is the word of God. It is how he reveals himself to us. In the scriptures, we meet God. We experience his goodness. First Peter, when he's writing to these Christians, they had experienced that goodness of God when they converted from their pagan beliefs to become Christians. And they received that new birth into a living hope. But Peter says that they can continue to experience that goodness by craving after the word of God. God it says plant the word of God like a seed into your heart and if you do you will reap a harvest if you plant God's word into your heart as a seed you will reap a harvest but it's not necessarily the harvest of knowledge it's not even just the harvest of uh, personal holiness but if we as a church plant God's word into our lives we will reap the harvest of a loving community. Because that's where Peter starts off this section. So again, just look back at verse 22 of chapter one. It says, now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. All through chapter one, Peter uses the imagery of family that through Christ, we can now call God Father, and he calls us his children. But that means that we call each other brother and sister, because we are one family. The first uh, word love in, that, in the original Greek is the idea of family love. We are to love each other as brothers and sisters. That's what the word of God does in us. It's not a superficial love, it's a deep, sincere love from the heart. And the word of God needs to be a part of that. That's why when we gather together like this, the word of God, it's reading and it's preaching is central in what we do. Because so that by obeying the truth, we will be the loving family of God that he has called us to be. So how hungry are you today? for the word of God. Again, when you think about your, your non-perishable items, I imagine a lot of you have cans and tins that are, are stuck in the back of your cupboards. You get them with lots of intention, where you like to have them in case of emergency, but they end up just sitting there unused at the back of the cupboard. It's the same for many people when it comes to the Bible that we have every intention and we like to kind of know where it is in case we are, we're desperate and need some, uh, some encouragement from it. But for, most of, for a lot of us, the word of God remains unused, unread and unlived out. And instead we, we try to fill ourselves with the temporary thing to satisfy our appetite. But the word of God is eternal. The word of God is living. The word of God is pure. 
And the word of God is good. It gives us new birth. It helps us to grow in our maturity and it produces a harvest of love. So crave after it. Have your fill of all that God has spoken. Practically, what does that look like? Well, first of all, keep coming to church. Keep coming and hearing God's word and the preaching. If you miss a week, go back on our website and catch up. At home, start reading the Bible. We have reading plans that give you a few verses of 1 Peter to read each day. And again, they're on our website or I can get one to you. Come to our connect group on Wednesday. If you've got a particular topic that you're interested to know what the Bible says is, then go and read a book. And if you want suggestions or I can point you in a place where you might be able to get resources to find out more about what the Bible says on a certain issue. Maybe you could write out your favorite Bible verse and just put it somewhere where you'll see it every day just to remind yourself of God's truth and live it out. When you read something in the Bible or you hear something on a sermon, try to live out the word of God. Put it into practice. Whatever it is, just try and find more ways to bring God's word into your life. We're going to turn to God now in prayer and ask that he will help us to do that. So let's pray to God. Father God, we thank you for your perfect word. Thank you that it gives us new life, that it revives the soul and gives us the spiritual nourishment we need to grow up in our salvation. Lord, we are sorry for how we reject and neglect it and how we fail to put it into practice. Please forgive us. Thank you for sending to us your son, Jesus, the eternal word made flesh who came to dwell among us. Before the creation of the world, you chose him to die for us so that through his precious blood, we could be redeemed and made part of your family. Thank you for the faith and hope that we now have in you because you raised Jesus from the dead and glorified him forever. Holy Father, we have tasted and we have seen that you are good. Send us your Holy Spirit now to give us an appetite for your word so that we might know Christ more, love each other deeply and give glory to you. Amen.